Organized by the People First of Atlanta, Georgia, the Long Road Home March, a voice for freedom for those with disabilities who are locked away in nursing homes and institutions. Most of the marchers are individuals who they themselves are dependent upon community-based supports to live independently. Even more telling, many of these marchers have spent time in an institutional setting. For 2005, their cause? Only to have representation, a voice in the ever-changing long-term care system. The marchers are represented as individuals, citizens, voters, who do not represent any political party or lobby, each with their own individual story. The march is a celebration and anniversary of the U.S. Supreme Court's landmark decision to uphold the Americans with Disabilities Act's most integrated setting clause to allow two individuals from two different institutions to transition and receive personal support to live independently in their community in Georgia. After last year's march, Governor Sonny Perdue agreed to meet with the Long Road Home March quarterly and participate in some way with the Long Road Home March celebration this year to show support and commitment to the Olmstead decision. The organizers made numerous attempts to attain commitment from the governor's office to participate and support this cause. This is their journey and story. this last year from Milledgeville. This year we're starting from Gracewood. The nursing home and institution that Elaine Wilson was in. She was one of the defendants in the Olmstead case. We think it's time that Georgia complied completely. Olmstead passed in 1999 and they're still backlogging people with a waiting list over 5,000 waiting to get out. This just doesn't make sense. I was inspired two years ago by a march that was put on by ADAPT. It was a national march, and people marched from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. I went up for the celebration of that march, the culmination of that march. And as a result of that, we felt that it should be done 
here in Georgia because we have the same issue, more so in Georgia, really, because the case that inspired this whole thing, the Olmstead case, started in Georgia. And the Supreme Court ordered the state to provide services in the communities for people with disabilities. It applied to all the states, and Georgia has chosen not to comply with it. So it, it was needed to be pushed more in Georgia. As they said during the 60s, the whole world is watching what Georgia does. To the bureaucrats who set the system up, to our governors and legislators who have empowered the system and helped it remain in place. We who are the object of this system, we who this system feeds off of, we are telling you that we're tired. We're tired of being locked up. In nursing homes and institutions, the people are supposed to be residents. If you look at the contract that they get you to sign, it calls you a resident, as if you were living in an apartment complex, as if you were living in a condominium. So tell me why, as a resident, you lock the doors and keep me from simply walking outside to enjoy the fresh air. As a resident, why am I told what I can eat, what I can't, what I can do, what I cannot do, when to go to bed? Why am I told where to go, when to go? It doesn't sound like I'm a resident. It sounds to me that I'm following the agenda of a convict. Get us out! Keep us out! Don't put us in! Get us out! Keep us out! Don't put us in! Get us out! Keep us out! Don't put us in! Get us out! Keep us out! Don't put us in! Get us out! Keep us out! Don't put us in! Get us out! Keep us out! People with disabilities deserve a life of dignity and respect, and you can't get that kind of life living in an institution, no matter how fancy the name. There is no grace in gracehood.
How long were you in the nursing home? 19, 20 years. I came in uh, November 16th of 1982, and I exited the nursing home um, July 12th of 2002. And it has been a long road home. to institutions and nursing homes. It's about supporting families. It's about creating a support structure that gives people access to freedom, access to community, access to living their lives in the communities with their own families and with their children's families and with their children's children's families. That's what it's about. governor has refused to meet with us. <laughs> um, would you be willing to act as our emissary to him? You're talking about going with you tomorrow? If you can make a call. Oh, make a call. Bobby Glad, I, I'm sorry that the governor oh, has chosen not to meet with you. I, um, I don't know what his reasons are. Well, actually, I can't. I've got, <laughs> I've got, I've got a nine to about a three o'clock commitment tomorrow, but um, out of town. But um, I'm sorry that he has, um, and I don't know what his reasons are, and so I'm not going to try to. Um, I don't want to be critical. I mean, maybe he had a very good reason. I don't know. Um, but, um, but I think that um, I think he should. I mean, I think he should take advantage of meeting with people. Um, as often as he possibly can. A little, um, a little background. Last year, we tried working with him because tomorrow is the anniversary of the Olmstead decision, which orders the state to provide accommodations for people to stay in the communities. Well, this march was formed to celebrate that decision. We wanted the governor's participation. We were disappointed when he chose to celebrate the American idol. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 And not us. Yeah, she's talking about the, the fact that the governor is not going to meet with you all tomorrow to celebrate. No, that was last year. Uh, last, year last year. But he spent but, time celebrating American, the woman who was in the American idol. Yeah. I can understand and your disappointment, and rightly so. Yeah. I agree with you. And I don't think that thing's on. Last year, he agreed to I don't think participate on. this year. And we started in January trying to schedule him. We even wanted him to be in Athens tonight for the big celebration. Uh, we worked until last Friday at which time his office told us he was busy today. He, he was going to be out of town today, which is a likely story. He was out of town last year, too. But, <laughs> but uh, I gave them an alternative for him to meet with us tomorrow. 
and they said he couldn't do that. So, if you can make a call, we'd appreciate it. I can't speak on behalf of the governor, you know that. I know. And, um, and I'm sorry again, I understand your disappointment and I think you are right to be disappointed. I'm sorry as a citizen also um, that he has chosen to not um, give you folks the time that you deserve to have with him. Um, so, you know, if I, you know, to be honest, I don't have much sway with the man either. Um, he doesn't seem to be very interested in anything that, um, that, that about Athens. Um, but I, but that doesn't mean that I can't, you know, call his office and yeah. suggest that maybe he might want to change his plans for tomorrow. So, but as, as an elected official, one to the other. Yeah, If they are to grow, if they are to become members of society, then they must be allowed to live in society. Blue Ridge Healthcare, One Child, Georgia Re Regional Hospital of Atlanta, 13 children. Well adjusted, valuable, with self worth. Personal Care of Georgia, One Child. Muskogee Manor, one child. Nursing Home Center, number one, Central State, 13 children. Old Cap Nursing Home, one child. At Parkwood Development Center, 42 children. Among people who love them, who raise them, and who nurture them. Rose Haven, 13 children. Peach Health Care Systems, one child. Caroline, 13 one child. Celestial Health Care, one child. Thompson Manor, Bariatric Care of Georgia, one child. Phoenix Center, Central State, eight children. Hill Haven, one child. Lakeview ICF slash MR, two children. Let us pray for these people, these children. Let us hope that they will get out of their nursing homes and be with their family.
decision was turned down in 1999. We're here today to say that Georgia needs to stop forcing people in places where they do not belong. What is this all about, you? It's about people getting out of nursing homes and institutions and being with the family, especially for the children. Because they don't want to be in nursing homes. They want to be free, like us. That's what that that's what it's all about. Right. We gonna make it. And we're gonna have some changes come through too. It's not a home. It's a prison. And that's what it felt like to me. I was in a prison. I'm a person, I'm used to going, doing what I want to do, when I want to do it, get up when I want to get up, eat whatever I please. I couldn't use the phone without who you're talking to. I couldn't talk to no one without what the conversation's about. I'm not used to that. And that's why I'm here on this long road, long journey, to fight for our people.
being pushed away and forgotten about. We are people. Our lives are valuable to us and to society. We are valued members of society. Think of it this way. As I've said before, live long enough and you become what? Say it louder. Live long enough and you become what? Live long enough and you become what? That means the state of Georgia is going to treat you the same way they are treating us right now. Therefore, it's time to start curing the problem and bringing in a solution now. Not tomorrow. Not day after tomorrow. But was one of those parents that said, always said, that I would never, ever leave my child anywhere, especially in an institution. Um, I found out real quick that I was wrong. Uh, I was forced to leave him in an institution, um, but there were no other options. Do I like being out of a nursing home? Oh, yes. Am I happy to be out of a nursing home? God, no, I am. He brought me a long way, and I'm here to do my battle.
They want to keep us in nursing homes instead of the community. We want our own home in the community to do what and control of what we want. In the Olmstead case, the case that started right here in our home state, Georgia, the Title II, that the United States Constitution requires that all people be given access and all people be given the opportunity for care and to live independently in our communities. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's been more than 50 since the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act and we still wait in Georgia to realize the full benefits that are guaranteed to us by the law. I'm here to stand with you to show my support with you as you send a signal to Governor Perdue that we won't wait another 15 years, we won't wait another 15 months, we won't wait another 15 weeks or days. The time is now for Georgia to quit bringing up the rear on this issue. Why I'm here with the Long Road Home March is to help our people get out of the nursing home. I was in the nursing home for a year and 10 months. And I'm gonna put it nice, compared to the way I wanna put it, I'm gonna put it nice. Nursing home is for no one to be in. No one. kept him from appearing at the event today and yesterday. My, um, my schedule yesterday also kept me from being there. But what I want to do is, is let you know that there is a difference between not appearing at an event and not having a commitment. And I, and I want to tell you about three things that are going on regarding our commitment to helping people live in the community um, as independent as possible wow. rather than institutions. The, the first thing is, the reason I was gone yesterday is I was in Baltimore. Okay, I was meeting with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. What we were launching, and I'm sure some of you have read about it in the AJC, uh, Medicaid um, reform um, package. We are at the very beginning stages of implementing that. Okay, and part of the, and part of the reason we're doing that is because we know that one of the largest drivers in Medicaid is institutional care. And what we also know is, given the choice, most people choose not to live in an institution. 
And what we also know is given the choice, most people have health care outcomes better when they're not living in an institution. And given the choice, what we know is people's quality of life increases because they have then a, and I want you to use this word, normal life, because then they contact with friends, they do community, extended family. And so one of the major things in this Medicaid reform is to be able to say, why do we need a waiver for Medicaid services? Why can't we just say, if it's better for people to be in the community, let us pay for it with Medicaid dollars? That's long term. Right now, we are here yeah. to find out what the government intends to do. Okay, and and wait, and wait, wait, wait. okay. What the government intends to do to celebrate the post Yes. And why? Why? He joke. Not to keep his phone. Okay. He, he made the plan last. October. I started contacting you in jail. Okay. I started sending you email in April. I used to work for the mayor at right I know schedule or not made six months ahead of that. Okay. All right. Okay. Can, okay. Can, and I'll answer that question, but I'm going to also say, with all due respect, okay, you did. Okay. If you did all, okay, you did that. Okay, then, and, and, we di and we didn't attend, yeah. then we need to say, and I'm here to say, I'm sorry for doing that. But also what I want to say is, we are, we are, the reason, the honest reason that we had, that, that I wasn't there, okay, was is that we are busy doing the work that we need to do in order to get people out of institutions. And I don't want you to go away here confused at all on the commitment. The, the, fact that, okay, the, fact that, the fact that we are moving forward with this waiver that is very effective, okay, is to do the work that Olmstead was designed to do. Yeah, okay, no, no, hang on. Yeah, something right here for you, and that's, we'd rather do that because we're going a little around and around right now. These are eight issues we were going to talk to you about, now they're demands. Okay, go ahead. These demands okay. by the government by July 26 this okay. year. Okay. Also, also, we would like a commitment from you to arrange for the government to be at the next onset celebration. Okay. And we will hold you responsible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got a year and a half. What I can tell you is I can give you feedback on these. I'm not going to make any commitment that he's going to be there, but I'm going to commit that we're going to continue to work the way we're doing oh, to get people out of the That's empty that. rhetoric.
neighborhood. We are not leaving until they come out and be with us. They need to read our demands and get back with us and let our hair reply. They are not working.
right there. That's all we ask. That clear the doorway because of safety reasons. You don't have to go to step one. You can stay right there and get all your cash. assist in that, so hopefully everybody will be smart and will facilitate a win-win, okay? Yeah. Yeah. But I just want you to this and notice he said, right, let me tell you, this particular officer actually uh, tried to help. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And what, and, and what I want you to know, and I know it got aggressive in there, but it's never about fighting with the cops. Right, right. right. But you don't ever give up your space. That's All right. right. And if they oh, want to yeah. take your space from them, you can tell them how to do it, but they weren't smart. They pick the chairs up and try to move them versus saying, well, I can't move you. And what they got to learn when you do civil disobedience and then, like that, and, then they, and they, they want to take around. your space from me, they can take it and arrest you, but they need to ask you how. I uh, got called in because uh, Gwen got uh, arrested and um, the great thing about it was the uh, Capitol Police actually started talking to uh, the folks here and uh, they understood why we were here and understood uh, the purpose of the visit and the protest and the fact that people wanted a meeting with the governor and that uh, the governor wasn't showing up and that people were frustrated and uh, based on that they wanted to work out Gwen's situation and uh, so they let her off with a warning. Look at okay. all this power. Well, we won't be marching with us. People with disability are saying we are people too. We have power. Better watch out. <laughs> 